Hello there. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, present Enscape to the Microsoft uh, audience today. Um, yeah, my name is Kai Birival. I'm the Director of Support and Training here at Enscape, and uh, I'll be happy to guide you through um, the before mentioned topics uh, over the next uh, roughly 45 minutes. So what is what does Enscape do? What is the objective of Enscape? Um, Enscape tries to eliminate as far as possible all the effort that usually goes into a uh, into creating like the basic visualization to share um, an idea either if, if you're an architect or a designer you always want to communicate your design you always want to um, share um, your idea and uh, in the best case without any misunderstandings and um, while it's been always a tedious task to create a visualization either by back in the days painting or, or uh, building maquettes or um, exporting to a dedicated 3D uh, software, which took a lot of effort, know-how and time. Um, Enscape aims to do all of that by, um, yeah, with, with just one single click, with the click of a button. Um, we currently support uh, Revit, Rhino, SketchUp and Archicad natively of which I'm going to show today um, both Revit and Rhino. However, the uh, differences between how Enscape interacts with those softwares are fairly, um, yeah, uh, well, small or, or yeah, uh, rare. So I'll be happy to, 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 to explain where the differences lie, but again, our simple approach um, of an easy workflow uh, is true for all of them. So that means I can literally take uh, any Revit or Rhino project or SketchUp or Archicad. Um, and without further ado, I can click the Start button. Now let me mark that button first of all. Um, that's this here and all that you see here, that entire interface is an uh, Enscape ribbon that is present in your software after you've run the Enscape installer. Um, same here in Rhino, we see um, this interface here. Um, yeah, let's raise the drawings again. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just do that. Let's uh, go back to Revit, click the Start button, and I hope that I've reset my settings. I probably, no, uh, I, I think I have checked that. Yes, exactly. So um, what Enscape is doing now is it's reading all the information that is present in that Revit project. Um, of course, geometry, um, materials, lights, but also uh, smaller, or, or yeah, less 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 apparent uh, things such as the uh, location of the project, the date, the time. Um, so the sun angle to to be displayed correctly. Same is also true for uh, Rhino and SketchUp and uh, Archicad, of course. And it presents us, us with this, with a, uh, a full fledged high quality visualization that um, yeah gives you a perfect idea of what that project is going to look like, that design once it's been built in a realistic quality. We can change the daytime. We can um, have a look at it by night, of course. As you see, the lighting has been read automatically out of Revit. So um, this is already the the, uh, the, the the biggest gain that, that uh, Enscape can offer, a simple approach. Um, once again, maybe I should should uh, mention that once one more time. Uh, nothing here has been pre-calculated for Enscape or anything. We just have that bare Revit project with uh, some materials applied and some assets have been placed that Enscape um, delivers alongside its its uh, or alongside its its core package, um, and uh, that is literally it. So I just click that start button and I can now navigate my visualization immediately. So now you might think, okay, so so that's uh, quite useful. Uh, we're pretty much done for today. No, of course, uh, there's uh, some tips and tricks that I'll be happy to share. Um, the first key learning uh, show design with assets and materials, show design and various design iterations using objects and materials from the content library. So um, Enscape, the, the whole um, idea behind Enscape is to support as much as possible um, information that is available in the uh, core CAD software. So um, there are a lot of architects that will literally, um, let me just open a, a, a new project for uh, showcasing that, that will uh, start a new project and uh, open Enscape alongside that. So I'm just going to switch to uh, my 
new project that I've created here, and it's of course it is it is empty. Let's actually uh, align Enscape on one side of the screen, Revit on the other one. But of course, it's probably best to use it with two monitors, so you can continue using your CAD software uh, in full screen. But not only does Enscape create a visualization from scratch within a few seconds with just one click, it is also connected to your software at all times, which means I can just start uh, creating, um, yeah, an, a project geometry, and uh, Enscape will um, will transfer, will synchronize that immediately. We can literally continue working the way we have done it uh, for for forever. Um, with the workflows that, that the architect, the artist has established uh, for, their, for their software. And uh, Enscape does communicate all of that immediately without you having to, uh, to press any buttons, to upload it to any cloud, to uh, export it and re-import it anywhere. Um, Enscape is constantly connected, which of course allows you to have a realistic visualization, a realistic idea of what you're creating throughout throughout the the whole lifespan of a project. Not only that, of course, you can imagine it also helps to have a tremendous, um, very very streamlined client discussions, design discussions, dis uh, discussions in in a team, because you can uh, yeah uh, you can create or you can. Um, achieve changes immediately and see how they uh, how they affect the whole project. So let's switch back to our main project here before we have to to build anything from scratch. And let's switch to that 3D view as well that is present in that project. And Enscape will now just reload all of the geometry that it finds in Revit. So it's very naive in its approach, but has a very solid and uh, yeah, very very scientifically and uh, and aesthetically correct output. So um, now um, a question that is often being asked is, uh, first of all, um, architects sometimes are not used to work with uh, materials or don't have those necessarily uh, set up in their project. So how to make a, uh, a project look as good as possible just like this? Um, well, first of all, I, I also like to say you do not necessarily have to. Uh, apply materials if you don't want to. We have uh, a lot of modes, visual modes that um, help to convey a project without uh, materials necessary. So you see we have a white mode, for example, that uh, displays a project as if it's been built from, for example, paper. We can even go a little further and add some outlines for a uh, artificial, for a cartoon-like look. Um, or we can use Enscape for lighting uh, analysis with a with the light view mode, which we see here, that uh, gives us a, a correct idea of how much looks, how many looks are falling onto each uh, space at any time with a dynamic scale. So we can have a look at the natural and the artificial lighting in a scenery. But of course, to make a project look as good as possible, uh, you probably want to have a look into uh, materials now. Luckily, um, Revit comes with a large, um, well, a, a large library of materials. We let's let's have a look maybe at at, at our floor here and uh, get that material first of all. And here too, of course, anything that I'm uh, about to, to to change about my project is going to update immediately in Enscape. So I can, for example, just choose this wood flooring uh, material here. But apart from that, Revit uh, comes with a appearance library with literally hundreds of materials that have been well that work perfectly fine with Enscape. <clears throat> Let's stick with this wood flooring here. I'll just click apply, and uh, we should see those changes immediately in Enscape. Let's see. Maybe I have to click OK in this case. I hope I have uh, applied the correct uh, material. Yes, there it is. So. Uh, as you see, um, those informations that are present in Revit in the appearance uh, tab of a material, which is the uh, tab that contains all of the well visually correct and um, yeah elaborate uh, uh, informations. All of those informations are being uh, displayed correctly. However, we still are lacking a little bit of depth, at least for my taste, in this image. And the reason behind that is uh, we do not have any, or we just have a very, very weak bump map applied. In this case, in this material type in Revit, it is called relief pattern. Um, throughout the Revit materials uh, 
bump mapping has sometimes different uh, different uh, names, but it's always the same um, the same effect. For somebody who's completely new to the field, bump maps are useful to create uh, surface noise and thus add a lot of belief. Well, uh, yeah, a, a lot of realism to an image. So uh, to showcase what I'm talking about, I'll just increase that relief pattern we have applied here. Click apply, and we'll immediately see that now we have some nice, real, well, believable texture on this surface. Now, what Enscape does in this case is it simply takes the texture that is already applied to my material as a albedo or color texture, and it takes the differences in, 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 in brightness and, uh, yeah, based on that information, sticks or extrudes surfaces or uh, intrudes or, or, or protrudes them or, or sticks them in to the surfaces or, or at least tells the renderer, so Enscape, to do that. Actually, the surface is still perfectly flat, but it is uh, creating the illusion of having nice, uh, yeah, irregularities, a nice little bit of chaos in there. And that adds a lot to, to photorealism in a uh, uh, rendering. Let me just check my time if I can go in further. Yes, I think we can. So um, there is a huge uh, library of materials already included in Revit. Let's have a look at um, how it differs to Rhino. So um, yeah, here we also have a project, of course. Um, also just your everyday project, pretty much. Uh, and also I can just go into the Enscape uh, tab here, click the Start button, and Enscape will simply read everything from scratch from that uh, project and display it in a beautiful manner. Now, uh, in this case, we'll already see some materials that have been uh, applied either using the uh, Enscape material editor, which is also available for, or that which is available for Rhino. For Revit, it's not necessary. Um, so something like water, but you can also just um, have some, some keywords uh, applied to a material. So in the material name, if your material name contains the word water, it will be displayed as water, as you see it here. If your material name contains the word grass, it's being displayed as grass. So that's one of the simple uh, tweaks that we've added to Enscape to make your life as, as a designer as easy as possible by simply assuming based on the on the naming of a material what it's uh, what it looks like. Now uh, Rhino comes with a slightly smaller set of uh, of predefined materials, but uh, there is a huge, uh, or there, there's, there's many ways to uh, create the material exactly that you're looking for, either from, from a photograph from scratch, but that is a little uh, too, too, uh, too much information for this webinar, I think. But there is also um, other, or there is one tip that I can share if you want to, to start uh, creating your own materials from scratch immediately. Um, that's called CC0. CC0 is the keyword, which you see, see here, um, and that means Creative Commons Zero uh, License. And if you look for CC Zero textures, um, these are basically textures oh, textures that uh, can be can be used for free uh, for any purposes other than acting as if you've created them yourself. So um, I can literally go in here and uh, look for any interesting material. Um, let's say maybe something like bricks. Let's say we want to create a brick look for our building in Rhino. The same process, the same approach is also possible in Revit. Let's pick this one maybe, it looks quite interesting. And we can go, let's keep it at 2K, and uh, let's just download this, um, this file here. And this gives us a, a number of image files for our material. And let's have a look at those and which ones are useful for Enscape and which ones are not. We have uh, five material types here. This one is called ambient occlusion. Uh, briefly said, that is a process that is used in 3D art, but Enscape does not require it since it um, simulates light in a way more physically correct and, 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 and true to nature way. So we can dis uh, disregard this, or we could use it as a bump map, we'll see later. Uh, then we have the color texture, which is just the image, the way the, uh, the material will look like in terms of color. We have a uh, displacement map, which, um, yeah, it's also a little, little bit too, too, too much for this webinar. We have a normal map, 
which is uh, sort of like the uh, second stage of a bump map. Enscape is capable of using these in any software, be it Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, or ArchiCAD, and any version of that software, and a roughness map, which also will be quite useful for Enscape. Now, just a quick um, idea on what this is going to look like. I want to, let's say I want to, to have my, my, my facade here of my building um, apply or, or, or with uh, apply with a material. Let's first of all find out which material is applied. So, um, all right, it varies. I hope I'm, I'm going to find the correct one. Or let's actually uh, maybe apply our own one. Just one second. There we are. Well, yeah. Um, or let's just choose this uh, this surface here down here, if you don't mind me. Um, I'm not that much of a Rhino expert as is here. It's also not that necessary to to, to showcase Enscape because again, it's uh, such a beautifully simple approach. Let's just take this one here and uh, change our material. First of all, let's make it a blank material again. So disable the existing uh, textures, and we have just a um, an empty surface with just one a with a blank color. Now let's say we want to uh, use the texture that we've downloaded. Just have a look, bricks 22. Since I have a number of textures on my on my desktop by now, should should clean it up at some point. So um, let's say we want to choose a different texture. We have our bricks here. So first of all, the color. Let's have a look at the uh, the spacing of the texture. I think that looks all right. Let's see what it's going to look like if we enable it. All right, looks like some 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 bricks there, but again, we're lacking the depth. Now, um, you can use your dedicated bump or, or normal map um, with Enscape, but also Enscape simply, uh, or Enscape allows you to use um, the very same texture as bump map, so, so it keeps that process beautifully simple, um, and it will still deliver a convincing and high quality result. Let's have a look at what that would look like. So I'm just taking the same color texture as before, and hopefully they're spaced out uh, equally. And uh, now we see, or we should see, let's, let's see. Oh, no, I didn't, didn't uh, enable it yet. Yeah, now we see, combined with a little bit of glossiness there, that uh, we have, especially if we change the daytime, uh, we actually see the effect of uh, the different light angles on on the material, and we see uh, that there is actually some, yeah, uh, some noise um texture roughness etc so um you see you can continue using your Revit or your uh, rhino material editor for rhino itself we have actually uh created our own material editor too because of a simple reason because rhino's material editor does not support glossiness textures so uh, to use the enscape material editor for rhino i just switched this material to be a enscape material and open up my Enscape Material Editor, which we find, ah, just hit, hidden it, uh, which we find right here. And now we have this one material uh, available here. Now, what, what has happened? We see up, up here is already a bump texture. What has happened is uh, if you just have one uh, color texture in your uh, material, in your material editor, um, you can click the Use Albedo button right here to tell Enscape, well, just use that color texture as bump map, and it will assume, based on the color, what um, what kind of relief it should be. Uh, we have the same workflow for a roughness map, so that simply also adds the, uh, well, some, 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 you know, irregularities in how reflective a surface is, which is great if you want to create something like, you know, um, some dirt on a surface, or uh, wood, for example, is, is, is perfect for that. Or, of course, we could also go there and instead of use the Albedo texture, we could use the predefined uh, bricks roughness uh, texture here to have the perfectly designed result. And we see all those nice little little uh, irregularities right there. And, well, while we're at it, we'll also take the normal map that has, that has been uh, created for this. And we see we have a way more drastic um, effect right there. Um, but in any case, a nice effect of you know irregularity, which helps a lot to uh, create a convincing image and actually trick the viewer into thinking that is a photograph that they're seeing here. Um, 
let's have a look at what this looks like in Revit. So um, in Revit, there is only the Revit material editor. We don't have to, to add any uh, functionality there because Revit already provides that by itself. But in terms of Revit, if you, if you want to create your own materials, we recommend to uh, create your own ones by pressing this button or at least use generic materials because those give you all the functionality that uh, is provided by the Revit material editor. So let's see, we'll start with a blank slate again with a just a barren gray material. And let's just add the same type of textures there. Basically, it's just the two images. Uh, let's choose, oh, there we are. Where's my desktop? There it is. So uh, we have the bricks color, a little smaller than before, but it should work for, for our uh, for our presentation here. Um, then we can just take uh, the bump map. We could try something like the displacement map. It is black and white, so so it's uh, already helping to convey uh, some irregularities there, as you see. Or we can create the, or we can use the uh, the specifically created normal map that is um, shipped with this particular texture. And again, we see we have the same uh, quite drastic result right there. But especially if you're changing, if you, if you so so the the surface noise adapts beautifully to any lighting situation you might have, and uh, thus functions very realistically. So yeah, that's uh, the texture part. Um, now for Rhino, um, Rhino is, is, is very, very uh, good in working together with other 3D softwares. You can load in uh, 3D models quite easily. Um, it's not th that case with uh, Revit, unfortunately. Um, so it's always quite tedious to get any realistic looking um, objects in a, oh, there was one control Z too, too many. Let's return to, to our wooden floor there. There we are. So um, to get um, yeah nice nice set dressing objects in your scenery, something like this high quality couch. Um, again, for all of our softwares, we have included a asset library that you can find. What I didn't mark it, so let me do that. That you find right. Uh, where is it? There it is. Right here. And uh, this is filled with uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, models. We're also continuously working on expanding that uh, that library of models. Just uh, waiting for it to to load. It's a little slow today. So you see, there is uh, tons of uh, yeah of objects that you can place in your scene to make it look more believable. Um, starting from interior objects to uh, people, plants, trees, cars. Um, so everything that you need to have a you know, believably looking scene. And um, the great thing about this is we don't really have to, 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 yeah, to take care of Revit for that. Um, let's actually switch to my floor plan to place this a little more easily. So, like that. There we are. So let's just, uh, it's just drag and drop, but what you'll see in Revit is, a low poly representation of what we're placing um, while an Enscape will show up as high quality model, as we see right here immediately. So um, that means, or that is of course, uh, um, for keeping your Revit project lean and, uh, and performant. Um, so yeah, we can have the best of both worlds, sort of a, a, a very, very uh, sleek and easy or, or simple um, 3D model in Revit where we have the full complexity and, and, and photorealism in Enscape. And of course, this helps in all stages of your project to get a feel what it's going to be like to, to what that space is going to be like once it's been built and also to convey others and uh, let them experience and understand your design. There we are. Okay, um, let's have a look at what you can actually export from Enscape. So learn how to use Enscape to create still image renderings, 360 degree panoramas, cinematic videos in a couple of seconds or at the most minutes. That is not an exaggeration. That is actually true. If anybody has been already working with 3D software, 
Um, maybe especially for videos, you are aware of uh, the incredible uh, amount of time that process takes. So there is softwares out there um, with traditional renderers that uh, will easily take for for a uh, for an image, depending on the complexity, of course, um, minutes, hours, if not even days, to create a single image. Um, there are workflows out there that will uh, take this long. I, I'm just looking for a perfect sun uh, direction here right now for anybody who's already been using Enscape. I'm, I'm currently controlling it using Shift and Control and U and I to really place the sun in an angle that uh, is interesting for me and actually to also help with the, realism, with the realism of the scene. I'll also just briefly go into the Enscape settings and uh, the atmosphere tab and select a nice horizon preset, which we also ship with Enscape. There's also other ways to have a uh, believable environment and I'll, I'll tackle those later on. But for this particular rendering, I just want to have a nice environment. So uh, with Enscape, let's we could create a full HD rendering to start with or we'll just go up to 4K right away. And the amount of, of time it'll take to render this image is, uh, let's see, I want to place it on my desktop, is uh, this long. So I'll guess something like six or seven seconds. Yeah, something like that. So um, immediately I've, I've created a high quality rendering and I can continue working or uh, continue looking for nice and beautiful shots. Or I can even tell Enscape to additionally export a object, material, and depth channel, um, which I'll show what exactly that means. That is used to help you to post-process your images. So this is the result that we're getting. First of all, that 4K rendering from before, we see in a beautiful high quality and resolution. And uh, now that, that I've also added that material ID and uh, Object ID and depth channel. This is what it, what it looks like. So this allows you to easily create masks uh, based on objects, based on materials, uh, to yeah, to to post process specific parts of your image. So no matter how deep you want to go into uh, post production and uh, you know uh, really polishing your images, Enscape allows you to do that as well for all of the mentioned softwares, of course. Um, so that's how simple it is to create a single rendering. If I want to create like a all around look at once, I can also tell Enscape to simply render a panorama. We have two types of panorama that you can panoramas that you can render. That's uh, the mono panorama that is used for um, display on any on any surf or on on any monitor, surface tablet, um, mobile phone, whatever. Or we have the uh, cardboard panorama, which is creating a stereoscopic image and allows you to actually also uh, perceive depth in that 3D visualization you're uh, you're creating, and you can then view it in those Google Cardboard uh, devices where you put your mobile phone in and immediately uh, experience the depth, the dimensions of that room. Let's create a, a, a regular panorama for this case. You can of course also change the resolution. This is just a medium resolution panorama, but it should uh, be perfectly enough for you to to experience what amount of quality you can achieve easily with Enscape. And I'm also going to share this panorama with you, which means uh, I can now that the panorama is finished, I can go to our manage uploads um, yeah, menu here. And this is our created image already done. We can export this as an image file, of course, and use for any purpose, or we can decide to upload this to our cloud, which is included in uh, the Enscape subscription. We receive a QR code that you see here we could, uh, you can, you could uh, scan this with your mobile phone right away and uh, see it in your mobile phone, or we can just click this button for Enscape to open it in a browser. And uh, this way you can easily share this link right away as well. Uh, actually, I didn't ask uh, the presenter, Sophia, I hope it's okay if I just post a link in the chat. I'll do it anyways, because uh, this way you can uh, all click this and have a look at it. Um, and that's how simple you can uh, you can share an entire you know visualization of your design uh, with anybody, no matter where they are. So again, we're still in the seconds range. 
um, let's have a look at how to create a video. Now, this might might actually take a minute, <laughs> or maybe even longer. But um, I will tell you a little story of my personal experience that will showcase how much of a of an advantage this is. So, to create a video in Enscape, just briefly, um, I press the K key. K is our yeah key to enter video editing mode, and I'll press the K key once more to create my first keyframe. This is what it looks like. Um, and now I can just fly through my project and look for nice perspectives and press the K key again whenever I want to, to save a keyframe. So let's do that and just block out a path quickly, something like this. Um, fly through our model, try to, to achieve some, some em emotional uh, response, some emotional pictures there, and then leave through the window again and, and in a total total perspective, something like this. Um, I can already press the P key to preview what I've created. Um, by the way, if you see uh, you know, uh, a low frame rate, uh, that is of course due to the, uh, to the internet connection. For me, this runs perfectly fluid. Um, but yeah, this looks all right to me already. I've just, uh, just placed a few keyframes. I can of course get even a little more out of that. Oh, I've, I've, I seem to have hit that woman's head there. I'm very sorry, I didn't want that. Uh, but I can, of course, change that by simply placing another keyframe right there and uh, clicking Confirm, and already I've adjusted that, uh, that camera path again. Just checking this time real quick. I think that's all right. So, um, or let's, let's speed it up a little bit. We can still go into any of those keyframes and uh, key certain certain aspects, such as the speed between each keyframe, the time of day to create a nice time lapse, something like this. Um, I could also key field of view, like a zoom effect, depth of field, which is that nice uh, blur effect that sharpens at a specific uh, distance, so you have very cinematic effects there. For this case, I just want to change the time of day. If you see that the time of day down there, by the way, is uh, off, that is because I've I've changed the the angle of my sun manually. But if I now preview it, I see that I have a, a beautiful time lapse there. We see the shadows are wandering and uh, the clouds are moving in the sky. So I I'd say I'm 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 uh, satisfied with this. Just to showcase how quickly you can get an actual video out of this, I'm just changing back to full HD. 1080p, uh, we have 30 frames per second, we have highest compression quality, and I just tell Enscape to render this video, and uh, this is how fast it goes. And just to give you some 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 sense of, uh, of uh, dimensions here, um, there's, uh, I personally have been working as a 3D artist before, and uh, it was really common to have a rendering that, if it took like four minutes per picture, it was really well optimized. Um, but that means that uh, for a 30 second video of uh, you know 30 frames per second, it would take me a whole week to render that video. And whenever you perform any changes, whenever the uh, the client wants to see something else or something is not the way you've imagined it, you have to do it again. And uh, now with Enscape, a video like that is literally a work of like five minutes and you can create a couple of those and then send them to your client and uh, have a nice uh, nice break and, and uh, have lunch. All right, so um, that's that. Then um, I'll just cut this export here, but it will probably take something like two minutes to export it. We already have a part of the video we can have a look at, something like this here. So you see that's actually a high quality export there, right there for you to share with anybody. Now, um, what is of course also a great communicator of designs and a great way to experience a project is, uh, let's just show it, this, a VR headset. Now, um, VR headsets that, uh, or we've already discussed uh, 360 panoramas that allow you to perceive the depth in a, through a Google Cardboard device, um, but these are static images. Now with a VR headset, let me actually just take off my headphones, probably won't need them right now anyways, and put on my VR headset here, and all it takes to get my VR, uh, my, my, my high quality presentation from Enscape to VR, and mind, we're actually just at one click depth here, um, all it takes to get this into VR is one more click namely the Enable VR button. And by clicking that, I simply tell Enscape to enable VR mode, and you see it starts 
tracking my head movement immediately. And I can actually see this scenery in uh, through these goggles. I can uh, grab some controllers and I can start exploring the scene um, straight away live. So that means I can start like changing the daytime while I'm watching. Um, I can change my, my uh, light modes or whatever. Um, I can get to to, to, to various uh, predefined views that, um, yeah, that come straight from Revit. Um, and also, as I've mentioned before, you can adjust the project on the fly. So if you have some, uh, some a, a client presentation, oh, sorry, there's the Windows button, didn't want that. If you have like a client presentation and uh, they are asking to see some changes, maybe, um, yeah, again, a, a different material or a section cut section box of a um, of a project or whatever. Let's just move this couch, by the way, or, or for example. And uh, you can perform those changes, and they will literally pop up in that visualization immediately. So you can literally st start adjusting the project in front of your um, astonished viewer's eyes. So there's my cable. Um, yeah, so we've heard tons of stories uh, of architects uh, telling us that they've had like uh, clients for ages and they couldn't decide on a, an actual design. It would go back and forth. They would, uh, they would, uh, yeah, uh, schedule meetings every six weeks to 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 see what the designers came up with, and they were never satisfied. And then they suddenly put put a VR headset um, on their heads, and they were like so much more rapidly getting to what they what they've uh, imagined so it's it's got you can imagine tons of tons, tons of great um advantages all right that is sort of the third layer or, or fourth layer of 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 uh yeah realism or, or or feature that you can that you can share enscape uh by the last one that i want to cover today before we get to our q and a is the standalone export because Enscape not only lets you create static images, videos, panoramas, or share your work in a VR headset, it actually also allows you to create what we call an EXE standalone or a web standalone. We'll have a look at that as well. Um, but let's create a EXE standalone first. Or actually, before I do that, um, because creating that EXE standalone as most things with Enscape is just one click of a button, so we keep it fairly simple and fairly easy. Um, so before we do that, for you to actually have something interesting to look at, um, I'll show you that you can also um, customize your whole experience. So you have seen the Enscape logo while Enscape was, was starting. Um, you see the Enscape name up here in the title of my window. If you don't want that, if you want to, to um, create the illusion of having a dedicated team working in the background manually for two whole weeks, as it's been the the case back in the days, uh, you can do that by simply choosing your own custom loading screen. Let me actually just take a nice rendering for that. Uh, which one? I've actually, yeah, this one, for example, that's going to look nice. You can have an interface overlay, for example, of course, your company logo. In this case, mine. Um, your own custom icon. I have some 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 nice uh, nostalgia icon there prepared, and I can add a uh, custom title. Something like this that will show up up there in the title of my window. And now, if I export this um, whole presentation as an EXE standalone file, let's just do that. It will take uh, a couple of seconds, roughly as long as it takes for Enscape to load, and it will then present me with the final size of that um, standalone file. That standalone file, by the way, it includes the whole Enscape uh, engine, the information in your uh, in your project, um, and it's Again, standalone. So you do not need any additional license. You do not need any additional software to execute it. You just need a computer that meets our system requirements, which are you need a Windows operating system and an AMD or NVIDIA graphics card that has at least two gigabytes of VRAM and supports OpenGL 4.3. That's it. So um, we're finished. We're at 300 megabyte of size, which is quite um, quite large actually. They usually um, well depending on the project, of course, but usually smaller. 
And if I now start this file that I have on my on my desktop now, um, we will see it will open up the uh, the uh, Enscape loading screen with our um, custom loading image that we have selected, also an image that comes straight out of Enscape. And once it's loaded, we see that we have an exact copy of what we're having in Enscape with uh, also all the functionality. Let's have a look at that once it's loaded. By the way, uh, we are soon getting to uh, those Q&A. So if you've got any questions, I think you can already ask them and Sophia will, uh, will yeah, transmit them to me. But here is our, um, our standalone visualization that we are having. Um, exactly the same as we are having in Enscape while it's connected to Revit. We can still jump through our predefined views. Those have been exported alongside, um, also with different time settings, et cetera. We can also go into the settings and uh, change the rendering style to light view, for example. We can change the daytime, of course. We can even enable VR in this standalone file if we want to, and a couple more interesting things. And you can send this file to any client immediately. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's how you can have your, your client uh, presentations in the future if you want to. So uh, yeah, you can upload it to, to, to a server, upload this to your website. You can create as many of those uh, standalone files as you wish. Now, um, as I said, you need a client that has a computer that is capable of running this. Um, if that's not exactly the case, we also have a sort of hybrid between that panorama and the standalone export. And that's actually, no, let's let's stick with Revit. All Everything that I've said so far uh, since last mentioning Rhino is also true for Rhino, Archicad, and SketchUp. Now, if I want to create a web-based hybrid between uh, Panorama and Web Standalone. Uh, I can click Web Standalone right here. Again, just one click to, uh, to, to, yeah, to, to use this feature. And Enscape will start uploading this uh, visualization. And again, it should uh, take a couple of seconds. And it will then open this visualization in a browser. And it will then run on a different system. So the quality will be a little different than before. But uh, on, on the upper side, you can also uh, run this on slightly weaker machines that don't exactly fit our system requirements. So let's have a look at what that's going to look like once it's uploaded. It's probably sharing that uh, internet connection with, uh, with my presentation here right now. Sorry, I was out of the picture. But as soon as it's uploaded, it's actually opening my browser and um, will now again, download that uh, that visualization, and will then present us with a again live walkthrough of our design straight from our Revit data, or again Rhino, SketchUp, or Archicad.